three, two, one. Voice with Julia, change your voice, change your life. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Voice with Julia's Technique Talks, where we demystify conversations surrounding vocal technique with behind the scenes access to great singers of today. I'm your host, Julia Radosh, and with me here today is tenor Ferdinand von Boltme. Hi, Ferdinand, it's so nice to have you here. Hi, Julia, how are you? Doing well, doing well. We're, we're close, but far away. Where yeah, are you right. in the world? Pardon me? Where are you in the world? Now I'm in, in Munich because I'm, how can I say, I can, can, cannot go back to Italy because of this, what is it? Uh, the Corona <laughs> pandemic, something like something, this. Something, something like something that. I heard about that and they just told me that there's no <laughs> train and the, the borders will be closed. And so I just um, hanging around here for another two months, maybe. I don't know. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, we're so happy to have you here. And I just want the audience to know what an amazing tenor we have with us here today. So I'm going to read a little bit about you, Ferdinand. Okay. Ferdinand has performed with such theaters as La Scala, Wiener Staatsoper, Bayerische Staatsoper, Zurich Opera, Washington National Opera, Salzburg Festival, Rossini Festival in Pesaro, Tokyo Opera, Theater de la Monnaie, the National Theater in Bratislava, the National Theater in Vilnius, Latvian National Opera, Staatstheater Wiesbaden, Staatsoper Hamburg, Tiroler Festspiele, Bavarian Radio Orchestra, Wiener Volksoper, and the theaters in Stuttgart, Dusseldorf, Köln, Mainz, and Leipzig, plus many more. Are there more theaters in the world, Ferdinand? Oh, yes, there are. There but are not only a, a few. <laughs> yes, 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 there are a lot of, of uh, but you, had, you know that I'm, I'm already singing for 20 years, so um, it's... it's Let's say yeah. it's okay. It's okay. You it's, make the rounds. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I make a little round, and I, it was very. I was very happy when I when I came to Washington, because it was an invitation of Placido Domingo, who invited me because of the Operaria, um, Operaria competition. The Operaria competition. That's wonderful. Yes, I took part of the Operaria com competition, and I was absolutely sick when I sang this competition. So I was not very lucky with that, but. Even though so, um, Placido invited me for the Jacquino. Well, you made enough of an impression. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And I, I would like to continue with your bio because I think this is really in interesting. You just mentioned that you sang Jacquino. Um, <clears throat> and Ferdinand, you began your career singing all the major Mozart and Rossini tenor roles, lighter repertoire, right? Well, I, I, I started with operetta. I started wow. with, with the Wiener Operetta. I started the Volksoper, uh, the Lyric, yes, Lyric tenor repertory of Operette and Mozart. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I switched to, um, to the Rossini repertoire. Mm -hmm. And this was very funny because I, I absolutely wasn't supposed to do this repertory. And I, have n I had no idea about that. But it was, you know, um, I'm, I'm married with an Italian wonderful woman and we have two wonderful children, now kids. And um, we spend our holidays, you know, in Italy, we have three months holidays and we spend our holidays in, in Rimini, in Italy. Mm -hmm. And I said to my wife, well, listen, I can do this for two years, maybe three years to stay, to, to be there for three months, but then I have to work, I have to do something in the summer because it's very important. And yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, and um, um, so maybe you should go to Pesaro. <laughs> it's just 30 kilometers away from Rimini. What is Pesaro? Uh, you don't know what is Pesaro? No, I don't know what is Pesaro. It's the Rossini Opera Festival. Ah, okay, but I never sang with you. It doesn't matter, just go there for an audition and you will see and... and, and uh, yeah, yeah, you will see. You you will you will make it. You you just go to the Academia Rossiniana. You make this <laughs> Academia Rossiniana. B yes, but I have to study some Rossini aria, maybe. Yeah, but that's not so important. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> I went I went uh, to to Pesaro and uh, mm -hmm. to Alberto Zeda, who was the, the former 
chief of this festival and the, let's say also the founder of the festival. And uh, I, I sang the aria of Lensky, which is very Rossini. Very Rossini. And, uh, I sang the aria of Don Ottavio, which is also very Rossini. And uh, it was a fine, it was nice because um, Albertus then told me, yeah, 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 you know, your voice is not so big, but it's not so small. It's not really beautiful, but it's not ugly. So at least it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, but he said also, but you 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 you, you seem to be an intelligent guy, and you have musical talent. And okay, so I will invite you for this for the for the for the academia next year. But please do me a favor, learn some Rossini arias. Okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I had no idea about the Rossini repertoire, really. I just know I knew Barbiere, of course, and I knew a little yeah. bit of Cenarentola, but I didn't know anything about the Seria opera, like Hermione, like Guillaume Tell. Okay. Yeah. So I bought an anthology of Rossini opera arias, and uh, well, they're just coloratura, and I have no about uh, no ideas about coloratura. I have to train <laughs> this. And I, I don't know if I want to do this. And and uh, I picked picked up picked out of the yeah. anthology the aria of um, Guglielmo Tell, mm -hmm. which is one of the hardest aria which is existed. Yeah. There were no coloratura, so I took this one. And uh, I went to the to the Academia Rossiniana, and he just shouted at me, Alberto, "Why you, you you never sang Rossini, and then you come with the most hardest and then the, the most hardest aria and the most hardest uh, <laughs> role of Rossini? No, you have to start with Barbieri. You have to start with with Tenerentola. Okay, so I really trained <laughs> for one year coloratura, taka taka taka, wow. taka, 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 taka the whole day, because I don't want it to make a, a brutta figura, si dice in Italian. <laughs> so, okay, and then we started with the, with the Academia Rossignana and it was really a very, very great experience to work together with Alberto Zeta. And, uh, and he engaged me for the next three seasons. Yeah. And as my, awesome. my, I, I sang Otello in, in yeah. wow. the role. So, and then I really fell in love with, the, with Rossini. And, um, yeah, until now. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'd love to continue with your bio so everyone can hear the progression. And then I'd love to dive into this with you as to how the vocal progression happened. So um, <clears throat> Ferdinand now sings roles such as Lohengrin, Parsifal, Eric in Der Fliegende Hollande, Max in Der Freischutz, Polione in Norma, Walter in Die Meistersinger, Manrico in Il Trovatore, Alfredo in La Traviata, Arnold in Guillaume Tell, um, Rossini's Otello, Berlioz's Benvenuto Cellini, and Paul in Korngold's Die Totestadt, which is actually where well, we met. Yeah, yeah, but that's a rose which I sang in the last 10 years, let's say. Yeah. So yes. Not now, but in the last 10 years. <laughs> right, in the last 10 years. Well, and I will say, like, your Paul is unfreaking believable. It's so good, so good. And um, yeah, it's okay. I can't wait to talk to you more about that. Um, a champion of lesser known works, Ferdinand has sung the roles such as Archangel Michael in Walter Braunfels' Jean d'Arc and as Piero and Pilade in Rossini's Hermione, Renaud in Gluck's Armide, Hagenbach in Catalani's La Valli, Zamoro in Verdi's Alzira, Leopold in La Juive, Gunther in Wagner's Die Fein, and Harold, the leading tenor role in Dvorak's early opera, Alfred. Ferdinand can be heard on Naxos Records, released as part of its Schubert Lied edition in a solo album, accompanied by Ulrich Eisenlohr. Ferdinand is also responsible for the publication of a new complete edition of List Leader for which he was also recorded a CD with pianist Charles Spencer. His work on this project includes research for a new critical sheet music edition 
and the redaction of an accompanying book. Wow, that's cool. Ferdinand has been teaching privately since 2008. Since 2015, he has worked as a vocal teacher for the academic section of the Tiroler Festspiele, where he has also worked as a casting consultant until August of 2019. Wow, you have like quite the resume. It's really awesome to read about you because I knew you personally before I knew all of your professional developments and engagements. It's so awesome. Um, I'd love to talk more about this transition that you made into singing the heavier repertoire. If you don't mind, we can start there. Yeah, well, what does it mean, heavier repertoire? What does it mean? I mean, at least it means that you have a huge orchestra in front of you, but it doesn't mean that you should sing in another way. So, um, uh, of course, the, the heavier repertory, it means that you have to, to, to open up a little bit the voice, the, 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 the pharyngeal space, let's say, and to use the, the first formant more or less, the, the, let's say the baritone or bass formant. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is very, could, be, could be very hard for a tenor because we are always used to sing like, you know, in the mask and, and, and like this and to get to the higher notes. But um, I think it's not the right way to do this. So um, even, and I, I learned this to use the first formant in the Rossini repertoire, in, in, the, in the Seria repertoire, because it was always written for the body tenor, mm -hmm. which has a, a range, yeah, a range about two and a half octaves. So, mm -hmm. and, and you have to make, to sing also, also these intervals. So from <laughs> <laughs> So you always have to use the space which uses um, a tenor in the, yes, let's say in the heavier repertory. And uh, well, how can I say switching to Wagner? It's not a switching, it's an evolution. It's a, it's a progress. Mm -hmm. It's not that you can say, so today uh, <laughs> last year I sang Mozart and now I try to sing the Wagner repertory. You have a completely other, other orchestra in front of you. It's, it's, you have 120 people and um, you have to trust yourself that you will pass. Otherwise you start just pressing, give more power, more air, more <laughs> tension and uh, Yes, you, you're starting to brutalize your voice or the singing, to brutalize the singing. And then we have also, we think about the cosiddetto helden tenor, which mm -hmm. means it is, it must be a held, it must be a fighter, it must be somebody who's fighting all the day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He's fighting for the, I don't know for what. And that's what people want to see. It's it's like a fight, but it shouldn't be like this because it's always singing. And uh, everybody knows that Wagner, on one hand, he hated this, the, the Belcanto tenors, the Belcanto singing. Because of what? Not because of the nice, uh, of the vocalization, because of the, of the, of the phrasation of the, um, of, the, uh, of the art of singing. No, because at this time of Wagner, the bel canto was a little bit, huh, let's say, um, without inhalt. Um, mm -hmm. People were just thinking about um, the, the, the bravura, about the high notes, but not about what they are saying. And that's what's, what's really scared Wagner. He, want, he, was a, he, was a, a, he, didn't, he didn't compose an opera. He composed a drama with music. Yes. So it's very important to sing or to speak the words, to know about the words. And uh, if you're just thinking about the nice voice and the nice uh, vocals and, and, and something like this, you're just losing the, um, the information of the words. And that's what yeah. he was scared about it. But if he had a singer, which was a, a bel canto star and, and ha sang very well in the traditional bel canto style, but all the way the words, the meaning of the words, and sang the drama, and not just the, the music. 
So he was absolutely happy. And that we have to, to remind us about this sort of singing. It's not a shouting. It's not a it's always palando. It's not screaming. Yeah? Mm. It's not that. It's a bel canto singing with, with the expression of the words. That's what it is. And you, we have to yeah. keep on that, I think. Yeah. So that's kind of, that's, so you don't think of it as any kind of transition in terms of how you use your voice. It's more of a dramatic sensation. Or I know you said that there was a little bit of, you, you wanted to bring in the first formant a little bit. So I'd love if you talk about that in singing heavier repertoire, how you yeah. balance that first formant with the ring so that you can still cut in the orchestra and yet sound, I guess, homogenous. Well it's it's more or less just um opening the throat mm -hmm. lifting the soft palate mm -hmm. palate yes yeah 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 and dropping the larynx okay it's more like more like this more or less this, okay. that it's mm -hmm. it's um if you go to the zoo and see and watching the um the shimya um afm apes apes mm -hmm. no not yeah afm the, the, yeah the monkeys mm -hmm. the monkeys the monkeys yeah. they are always screaming with the first form <laughs> and um it's interesting because singing is always um we have to create the primordial sounds um, which essentially correspond to the to the physical production of singing of a of a of a of a, of a tone. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, we have to use the whole range of the voice, and um, we we just lost lost this um, yeah um, this basic function of of the whole. Um, vo vocal apparat. Mm -hmm. Apparatus, apparat. yeah. Yes, we lost this because we, we started um, to, to learn the, the language, to speak, mm -hmm. and uh, the language is, an, is not just an, an uh, um, uh, how can I say, a basic, basic bodily function. It's, it's, it's something which which comes from the from the brain you know yeah. and yeah. so you uh, you think uh, it's it's a creation of 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 our thinking without yeah. speech language we can't think and each of right. us and so we lost this animal in us we need for singing yeah the uh, we we are starting to talk uh, more like this and then something sometimes like this and uh, uh, always more um, losing the the primary yes it's primarily yeah, primordial pri function, primal yeah mm -hmm. primal function of the of the voice of ha ah! yeah we lost this yeah. and we have yes. to refine this yeah yeah that's wow that's I, I haven't heard it described like that that's really really awesome what, it's very um, complicated to express in, in, a, in a foreign language for me, but <laughs> I hope you, you got the point. Totally. Now, I, I'd love to take us back in time because I think there's going to be tenors watching here and you're going to be very inspirational to them. And they're going to want to know, you know, how did you develop your instrument in the beginning? What were some of your struggles early on? What got you through those struggles? So I'd love to take you back to the beginning of your vocal training. And if you could talk to me a little bit about that. I had no idea about singing when I started. I just got on the stage and screamed, wah! <laughs> <laughs> Something like this. I really had no, no, no clue. But, um, um, but you, I was young and you know, you do everything with, 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 with power, with uh, force mm -hmm. and it just, it works. In a way it works. But then when I started the, to sing the Rossini repertoire, I was, um, yes, I had this confrontation with myself and uh, the confrontation with, the, with this repertoire. And you know, 
Rossini wrote music for the most famous singers at his time. Mm -hmm. So um, just to, to, to make it in a way, you have, you have really to study what does it mean singing? What does it mean to, to lower the larynx? What does it mean to open the space band? What does it mean the breath? and the, the flow of the breath and to work with the breath in a right way and not to use the pressure. So I think um, this repertoire is really um, the most important repertoire for a singer, for everybody. Mm -hmm. For, yes, for everybody, I think so. Mm -hmm. It's the basic, not even Mozart. For me, it's Rossini the basic. Yeah. So when you so when you started singing, then you said you just got on the stage and screamed. But <laughs> to put it in your words, but <laughs> did you um, did you have vocal training before you started singing on the stage? Well, yes. I, I how can I say? I started um, studying stage directing, so mm -hmm. I wasn't a singer. I never sang. I didn't sing in the choir. I, mm -hmm. I had always the feeling, wow, I saw all the singers in Munich and I said, yeah, it's just, you have to have it. Yeah. Every singer was fallen down from the sky and uh, I was not, I didn't fall down from the sky. <laughs> I just fall out of my bed sometimes maybe, but not from the sky. And um, <laughs> I, I really, I had so much respect um, for the singers, so I never thought about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I started uh, studying stage directing in Vienna, and uh, there were, were all these singers which tried to learn singing and which couldn't sing. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, wow, uh, oh, it's like this. You have to train this and you have to study this, but you can do it if you want. And yes, and so I started screaming, and my, <laughs> <laughs> and my former um, directing professor, he was, a, he was a singer, and he said to all his directing students, you have, to, you have to make some voice lessons with me, because you have to, at least to know what it means to create a sound, yeah? yeah just to, to know what people on stage are trying to do and what you can, can, can do with them. So, and yeah, and I went to the, to the voice lesson and I screamed. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, yeah, well, you have voice and you, 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 should, you should think about it to become a singer. Mm -hmm. And so I started, I started singing. I started singing privately. I started singing with the, in the, in the academy just for five years and then I get the, my first engagement. Wow. But as I can say, I had no clue about it. But the most important um, uh, incontro meeting was uh, the, the, my, my private voice teacher, Nikolai Geta, I have to say. Wow. Yes, I wow. In about three, four years. Whew, that's month, awesome. Month, yes. And uh, it is very interesting because um, He's, he made me think about what singing means. Every single note, every vocal, every word, every phrase, you have to know what are you doing. You have to be conscious about it. Mm -hmm. So when you're studying the repertory, when you're studying the role, you have to be aware what are you doing. And he knew really everything what he's doing in any, any note. And now comes, comes to the problem. If you go on stage, you have to switch off your brain and just trust in your voice and trust in that what you did before and it will come. Then it has to be yeah, automatically yeah. reflexive. I, mm -hmm. I don't know the words. Yeah. But this is the very hard thing because often you go on stage and you try to to do this what you what you did and uh, when uh, when you were studying and when you uh, you're thinking now okay now comes this high note and, uh, and just, okay. <laughs> um you have to to get the uh, yeah trust trust in your voice yeah, trust 
Mm -hmm. This is so important when you go on stage. And this is, I have to say, one of the most, um, um, one of these issues where I was really scared about and afraid about it. Yeah. Yes. But with, yeah, getting older and losing voice, you, um, you have more to, you trust more in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. That's really funny. Um, now, I know just from talking to you before that you have very strong ideas on breathing. And I'd love to talk to you about what you do and how you teach breathing and what you do yourself in terms of breathing and how important you think breathing is to singing. Well, breathing is, is the motor. It's, it's the mo motor of, of, of singing because... Mm -hmm. The, the air uh, creates the sound and you have to control the air and you have to um, make sure that you use it in the right way and uh, it's um, we, we always talk about support um, it means that um, you have to use all the muscles of, of the um, stomach Mm -hmm. yeah. the front muscles of the stomach and the back sure. the muscles in the back yeah it's um it's like yeah <laughs> and, uh, but then you have to 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 with with lowering the, the larynx you have to to relax the the larynx mm -hmm. that's the most important thing that you just don't <clears throat> yeah keep the larynx in a tension or to no it right. has to be absolutely relaxed so you have to use the the breath and you have to use the power of the breath and the muscles here and you have to mm -hmm. train them them and you will train them with the coloratura ah. <laughs> yeah we will train the breath with the coloratura and the very good thing with the coloratura is you have to relax the larynx otherwise you can't do them so mm -hmm. yeah so i with my with my students i always start with with breathing and that it has to flow all the time yeah mm -hmm. um sul fiato si dice in italiano uh, mm -hmm. on the on the air on, on the, the air, air yeah. on the breath on the breath mm -hmm. all the time and you have to control it and you will learn to control it with the coloratura that's yeah that's a very important skill i think so when you breathe in do you breathe in through your mouth or through your nose or both it depends if okay. i have time i will breathe through the nose and if i don't have time i have to it's it's the body tells you what you have to do in the situation mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. if you yeah and this is also um, it has to do with music with yeah. interpretation if you have a, a, a very long phrase then you mm -hmm. will of course breathe for you know it's 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 part of the breath is part of the music and it's so interesting because if you have a director uh, orchestra director and they breathe like and you just it's just impossible to breathe with them yeah yeah so if you see a, a good director he always breathes with you though yeah you no know, that's it yeah so yeah. breath is really really basic it's fundamental mm -hmm. and when you sustain a line so once you've breathed in and you're sustaining do you hold the body out or do you tuck the body in how do you practice that or or is it something else no 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 it's it's it's, it's the natural way of br mm -hmm. of breathing is to let the the, the stomach out when you're inhaling mm -hmm. yeah but you have to keep up the the chest of course yeah. that's very important not to get and then you have to make a little how can i say this um the ansatz it's <laughs> like a little tuck. Yes. 
And then you have the control about then you have the control about the breath. Okay. Okay. The stomach is going inside and even the muscles in the back. They okay. hold, you know. And what are your ribs doing? What do your ribs do in that case? They just keep. They stay. They stay. Okay. Yeah. The whole chest stays. Yeah. yeah. So just a little bit of a stomach, like loose, loose abdominal muscles that can move in and out freely. Abdominal muscles. No, I <coughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. That's right. wonderful. Now you talk about training the breath via coloratura. Can you explain in more detail how that works? Because you were talking about lowering the larynx, freeing the larynx. So I'd love to you, for you also to talk about that and how you do that. Well, um, you're starting, <coughs> we, have, we have wonderful um, schools from Rossini and, uh, and uh, Dupre and all these guys. Mm -hmm. And they're always starting with a, with a, um, with a sort of triller. Uh -huh. to, if you start learning coloratura, you start with a triller. And there you can always you have to a little bit to how can I say um, uh, the abdominal muscle has always to to do this little impulse. Mm -hmm. So that's the control of the muscle. And if you train this, then you have the control about the coloratura. You just have to give a little click 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 and it comes yeah it, it, it just works it just works so so you pulse on each little note or do you pulse on the big beats no no i start with this yeah okay <laughs> okay and uh, and then with the with the if you go to the to the um to the gruppetti <laughs> So you can start to just to give the impulse to the to one of, to the first note of a of a of a um, of of a yes yeah and uh, yeah it's a training it, it takes you several years I I think so but yeah. it's worth it because the the coloratura is uh, gets a sort of support and it's not just a, you know. So yeah. you have really every single note, you have to give the uh, a breath support, let's say it's like this. Yeah, you have yeah. to start with this. Okay. And when you're talking about lowering the larynx, yeah. how do you go about relaxing and lowering the larynx? Well, that's very easy when I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah. It's more or less this. Yeah. Okay. To, somebody tells me, yeah, you have to have the feeling of a, of a, of a potato in your mouth, which is very hard. And you, <laughs> um, but the important thing is you don't have to push okay. to push it down the larynx. Mm -hmm. You just have to open it, mm -hmm. you know, and that's it. That's not so, yeah. Okay. It's not so hard, I guess, to do that, but to maintain that during a vocal line is that, yeah, because, um, uh, yeah, and, and we always sing, think in the way that you that you have to go into the mask and everybody toasts about the mask and you have to put this, the, the sound in here and you, even if you go higher, you just you know, do like this. And that's not good because you have to right. keep the, the larynx down yeah. to have the first formant also in the, in the high note. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's very important. And it's yeah. good for the voice. It's very healthy. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. The, the, the larynx is, it's, it's going up between your ears. Yeah. And uh, that's not so nice. And it's, the sound yeah. is like a, like a you know, frog, or like a duck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, how, how much does tongue position and mouth position play into your singing? Do you did you have to think about that? Is that something that you're conscious of, or at least in the beginning, probably not now, but how do you think about that? Well, the tongue is very important for the vocal ausgleich, the balance of the vowels, you know? Huh. So if you're I, O, 
you are, you have always to open this 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 pharyngeal space mm -hmm. and the soft to to to, to um, lifting up the the, the soft the palate. palate. Yeah. yeah. And but the tongue is 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 um, creating the 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 vowels. Mm -hmm. yeah? so, I O. Oh. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it 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 doesn't. Uh, how can I say? It has to be on the what? It has to be relaxed all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not the, the the tongue has to. Like, you have to make this. So. Right. Yeah, it's hard to say for me in English. I <laughs> In English, what 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 you do? do you, does your does the back? I, I noticed when you were just demonstrating that that the back of the tongue was staying up when you articulated all the vowels. Is that something that you are That's conscious of? E. E, 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 uh -huh. e, e, ah, ah, e, e. Okay. Well, that it depends also on the on the individual physical constitution. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, because there are people which really does, uh, if, if, if they go to the to the higher notes, they're just pulling back the um, the tongue. It yeah. works for somebody, for, for other, other people it doesn't work. So it's really very individual what the tongue yeah. does and can. And you have to figure out this yeah. for yourself, what works yeah. and what doesn't work. Yeah, that's very true. And when it comes to mouth opening, what, what do you think of? Is that also just sort of a byproduct of singing well, or did you have to think about opening versus closing in different parts of your voice? We're talking about the mouth or about the lips? The mouth, the, 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 mouth, the lips, both, both, I guess. Um, yeah, the mouth, mouth is like the, 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 the thing of the trumpet, you know? So you mm -hmm. have, of course, to open it, but we have the problem in the in the lower in the lower um, uh, tessitura mm -hmm. that if you open up the mouth the mouth the mouth the mouth too much, yeah, um, you just you give a little pressure on the on the on the on the on the larynx, and that's right. a problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, But if you do it like the Russians and give a little bit something like this, yeah. To yeah. pull it, the 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 chin, the chin, the chin? The chin mm -hmm. a little bit forward. You just have the the open space here. Yeah. So this is very it's a very good trick. <laughs> <laughs> to have the lower notes, not and and not not giving some pressure on the on the larynx. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. I've never actually heard of that. That's very interesting. Yeah. So you actually distend the jaw slightly forward for the lower notes. Yes. So oh. how, it's a question: How can you open the mouth? Right. In the lower, right. in the lower tessitura. Right. Without pushing down the the larynx, so just give the space a little bit more yeah. forward. Yeah, it makes sense. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now yes. I'd love, I'd love to jump into registration, and how. You have worked to balance your chest voice and your head voice, upper, your falsetto range, and how you view blending those registers and how you do it, or how you did do it in the past. Well, the, first of all, you have to figure out where is your passaggio. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing because on the passaggio you have to change just okay. a tiny little bit, not too much. Where does your so, passaggio lie? So my second second passaggio is about the C, C. Mm -hmm. And okay. then I have to really to, to start to to hold on the first formant. Mm -hmm. And uh, because the, the third formant, which is this famous singer formant, it's more or less always there. If you don't fall back with your voice, it's there. Yeah. yeah, if you if you talk normally, it's there. But and you don't have to create it. You don't have to 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 put it in the mask. It's mm -hmm. there. But we are losing the the first formant, and so we have to find the the point of the passaggio and to to hold this first formant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I have a C, do you have a C? 
Yeah, I can give you a C actually. Let's see. So I, I know there's my, my passaggio and uh, I have to a little bit more open my, my, uh, yep. my space there. Space. <laughs> You see mm -hmm. this little bit, this, this yeah. uh, transition? And uh, not to go the other way. Oh, no. Right. It's, it's Would you, you have to tilt, you have to tilt the larynx, right? Right, and you have to know where this, where this, uh, this formant, uh, the passaggio is, because this is the point where I have always to switch. So if I know, Morgenlich leuchten im Ruh, I know where is the where is my passaggio, and I have to concentrate on that, and always to put the right to put it in the right position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you view, I guess, you view the passaggio as a, a a group of notes rather than just one note. No, it's more or less right? one. Note. Oh, it is one one yeah, note. It's okay. More or less note. Two notes. Yeah. One, two notes. Okay. Okay. It's absolutely physically. You have to figure it out. You have to find it out with your voice teacher where it is. Yeah. And so you, it's, you can concentrate on this passaggio and then you don't have even to think about it anymore. But yeah. it's, not, it's not like uh, you often hear singers, they, uh, they just make a really, really a switch. Yeah. And that, it's not that. It, it yeah. can't be this. Like Garcia, Garcia, one of the most famous voice teachers mm -hmm. of the 19th century said, just don't think about the passaggio, it's not there. It is there, but you don't have to think about it. Yeah. Hmm. And, and do you use, are there special vowels that you like to think of when you're going to the passaggio or no? You don't. No. no, okay. So you don't consciously modify your vowels. Up. Not really, no. It has not, not really. Wow. I don't think so. I don't know. That's that. I, you know, it's. I've often wondered if some of that is a function of you speaking in a different position because of your German language, and that you don't have to maybe consciously think about vowels the way that maybe an American singer might have to because of the swallowing of the language and the swallowing of the vowels. I've often wondered this. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, now I got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We, we, these are unanswerable questions. You don't have to answer that. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's, it's, it's too poo because it, it depends on which language you're singing, of course. Okay. I mean, if you're singing in Italian language, yeah. then you're, you have just, if you know about the Italian pronunciation and mm -hmm. diction, you know that the, the vowels are very clearly in the Italian language. Mm -hmm. And we have, in, in the German language, we have often this, this closed vowels, like E, E, U, mm -hmm. but you can't sing U, and you can't sing E. Yeah, you have to sing. Uh. Yeah. So uh, the Italian language gives you gives you the possibility to sing and the right vowel bay. Mm -hmm. Can I say this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and uh, it's the basic for everything. The Italian mm -hmm. language for singing, it's perfect. And. Uh, then you have to adapt it for the German singing, of course. And uh, if you sing a, let's say, a high note of E on, on E, like Friede or Liebe, so it's never the Liebe. It's always the, it's a, the la, Labe. No, no, not yeah. the really Labe, but it's something like this in between. Yeah. yeah so you have to, ha to hold the, the larynx down to to open everything and to try to get to the to the e vowel mm -hmm. but it it's never the e vowel in the of the german language talking right okay 
so there is so there is a natural modification that you do but that's based on the vocal position rather than consciously modifying the vowel is that correct yeah yeah okay it's yeah a, so that is a form of modification i suppose yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's very yeah. special yes <laughs> So now I'd love you to talk to me about high notes because everybody loves the tenor high notes. What, what are some tricks or tips that you use to maintain awesome high notes? Um, is it repertoire dependent? Are there different kinds of high notes depending on the piece that you're singing? Well, the very famous high notes. Well, first of all, don't don't be afraid of them. <laughs> um, they should they should create it more or less in the same way than the lower notes. And the lower notes are the basic. If you have the right um, middle voice, mm -hmm. um, so you don't have any problems with the higher notes. Just keep on going, yeah. and keep open the space and don't make any pressure and don't be afraid of oh my god uh, maybe now my higher notes uh, are not so loud or something like this but of course you have some tricks because we the, the most important thing if that we have to stretch the epithel the epithel of the of the of the um chords okay yeah. Yeah. so we don't have it's, it's very important not to open in a, in a yeah it's it's, it's oval space yeah. yeah and then pushing the air through okay. it's that's not good they have to be stretched okay and this you will you will do with the with the with the lowering the the the, okay. the larynx yeah and use the first form on uh-huh and just and then you have to go yeah now we have the famous um let's say gazettes what is a gazettes uh, law of bernoulli Yes. That you're starting with a it's going to be thinner yeah uh -huh. if, you, if you don't push right and everybody says yeah but this is falsetto and that's not the right way to sing that's right it's not the right way to sing so you have to to use the the jaw yeah, yeah. okay open the jaw to get in this in this position a little bit uh -huh. and uh, you you get automatically the force for it uh, and yeah. I really don't need any force. It's yeah. Very okay. So you basically, it's very simple, very simple. <laughs> so what you're saying is you don't. But the basic is to open it. Okay. So, so it's the opening that allows you to join the registers right right wow it was always open. <clears throat> okay nothing with the breath pressure do you feel a change in the breath pressure no, no. just to give more a little bit of energy but not a... <laughs> no yeah right right <laughs> you have you have it's it's interesting because my 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 um italian teacher always says to me Il canto deve essere un piacere per te. Se, no, se, se non è un piacere per te, non è un piacere per me ascoltarti. So it means it has to be a pleasure for you singing. If it's not a pleasure for you, it's not a pleasure for me to listen to you. Yeah. Because singing shouldn't be a fight. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's not this. Singing should be a mass it's, it's a massage here for you. It's yeah. it's really a massage, and you're getting. It's like a drug. <laughs> so, uh, you just get you, you, you depend. You get depending. You more. dependent. Mm -hmm. Like a like, addicted, addicted like a junkie. Yeah, a, a voice yeah. junkie. <laughs> to be a voice junkie, all the time you're singing and you go to the high notes, and it, yeah. it's just nothing. It's just a massage. It's it's, it's very good for your voice, and. Okay. Um, that's the most important thing and this you can just reach without pressure it's mm -hmm. we have to come away from this thinking that that um singing 
or dramatic singing is like going to the mm -hmm. to the gym and <clears throat> yeah pushing the weights no weight bearing yes yeah right right um so now ferdinand what do you do to prepare your voice for singing how do you warm up do you warm up <laughs> yeah not so much a little bit yes with the with this um with the uh, with some coloratura mm -hmm. with some or with a with a song of tosti okay maybe something not very spec spectacular and uh <laughs> yeah no not i'm not warming up myself for two hours no no okay Maybe not no 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 it depends also for the role if you're starting yeah. um, with cellist aida of course, I have more to warm up when I start with Lohengrin. Right. So this, I have to be, I have to be warmed up in, for the third act in Lohengrin. <laughs> right, right. So sometimes you just warm up yourself by the role. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, I would love you to talk about um, some of the particular challenges for the tenor voice. What are some, what are some hallmark tenor problems, and maybe ones that you've had experience with in the past, and how did you work it out? Well, hmm. Well, of course, the problems, the problems are the high notes. Mm -hmm. The problems is, are the, 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 the high phrases yeah. because everybody starts pushing there and everybody, uh, well not, not everybody, sorry, but often we, yeah. we're, starting, we're starting pushing in this, in this area and, uh, and, 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 and thinking if you go give more pressure, more power, more force, it's good for us and, and we, just will, we just keep on going this way and then we will come to the end. It's okay. For, that, for this time, it's okay. Maybe for the next time. But after 10 years, it's not okay anymore. Yeah. So that's what I say. You have to... Well, when I'm working with my students, I just try to make sure that they really know what they are doing mm -hmm. physically. I'm not talking about, well, think about, you see now the sun and just create a, 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 a sound like the sun or you you have to I don't know what yeah. no it's it's really a physical thing it's a sport it's sports yeah. we are sportsmen in the f mm -hmm. first row and you have to train this mm -hmm. every day you have to train this and uh, if if you're aware about that what you're doing you won't have any problems I guess Mm -hmm. If I would had have a voice teacher which, which brought me to this on, mm -hmm. on this on this trail, I wouldn't have had problems which I had, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's um, yeah, it's the way of the singer. We have always to find to find the right way, and it's always also changing because, yeah. of course, if you're fifty, you have fifty years. Um, it's not uh, not not the same. Of right. course, well, you have to find another way, maybe. Nikolai Geda, he told me that when he was 45, something like this, he stopped. He, mm -hmm. Nikolai Geda, yeah? The, the, yeah. the tenor where everybody says he had ne never problems. No, he stopped and he started from the very beginning for one year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's so to find awesome. another way, the new way. Right. Um, yeah. Why do you think that happens? Why do you think somebody needs to stop and find a new way? Because we were, uh, until 35, we are singing with a lot of force, mm -hmm. which is not a problem for a young guy. Yeah. But um, then we don't have any more this, this power and yeah. the, uh, the Schleimhäute and all this is, is not so, so, um, so strong anymore. Yeah. And so we have to start to sing in the right way. <laughs> yeah. And this means with energy, but without force. Okay. Okay. You know? And so that, that requires, I'm assuming, breath training, 
registration training and body proper consciousness. And body, body consciousness. Okay, can, can you tell me a little bit more about body consciousness? Well, I think this that? is the most important for a, for a singer for a long career, mm -hmm. especially for a long career. Mm -hmm. um, on one hand, we have the, we have singers which are very intuitive, which mm -hmm. natural singers. Let's say yeah. they're natural singers; they just sing. Mm -hmm. That's right. But if you don't know anything about singing, then you will come to a certain point where you have to you, you don't know what you're doing because it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. yeah. The natural singing and um, so body consciousness means that you have to to understand what happens and when you are singing when you're creating a vowel when you when you're breathing and you just have to 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 make sure do i have to sing uh or I, what does it mean for me yeah is it good did i feel good with this phrase or did i didn't i go, feel good with this phrase do i have voice after this opera anymore or not and you have always to listen inside what happens in this moment because sometimes somebody tells you well this this note was very good and this sound was beautiful what did you do uh i don't know <laughs> <laughs> so you have exactly yeah. know what what did i do with my tongue was it the breath maybe the 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 issue which which make it made it sure that what i'm doing now or what was the what was the, what caused this this beautiful sound maybe yeah mm -hmm. what was it and this is very important you have especially during the stu uh, during studying and, and and rehearsing you have to make to listen inside what did i do now okay no, that's not so good, maybe. And I don't feel so good. And uh, what do you say? Is it okay? It's not okay, but I feel I felt it very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all the time you have to make sure what happens inside you physically. Yeah. Physically. Physically. Hmm. Okay. So that, like that's a long process, I would imagine. You need a, an analyst. <laughs> <laughs> With an analyst. <laughs> That, I, I suppose that's a long process if you have to figure it out. It's a never-ending process. Yeah. Never-ending process. I'm studying as well with a, with a teacher all the mm -hmm. time. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's a never-ending process. Mm -hmm. And what have you noticed uh, in your long career? What have you noticed that um, you're, you're still revisiting to this day? Like, what are, what are some of the technical principles that you still give focus to, conscious focus to today, that you had to also focus on when you were younger? I didn't get this. Okay. <laughs> um, so are there, th what, what are you working, what do you work on consciously today? Do you have to work on anything technically in your mind today? Well, it, it depends on the role because okay. you have, always um so if you're if you're starting to to study a role you have to study more or less from the beginning you have to mm -hmm. to study every single word every single note where is my passaggio how can i use it and uh, um it's not that when i sang one one wagner role then I can study just for two months another Wagner, Wagner role. I have, it, it needs one year, more or less. Okay. So you have always to figure out for this role, how can I manage it with, with my voice? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. and you are, you are, let's say you are, um, uh, what is this, erwachsen, to grow. Yeah. To grow, okay. okay. Growing okay. with, mm -hmm the roles you are studying okay yeah? and you can just study a role with yes i will learn the music and will learn the text and memorize the text and that's it no you have to study the role from the very beginning with all the technical issues with all your individual voice issues mm -hmm. and that's why you you shouldn't hear too much registrations with other people because they have just another voice 
Right. And that's okay. so important to, to figure out hmm. where, where, is the, where are the problems for your voice? Where are you, the goals for your voice? Where's your, your, your strengths for your voice? And you really have to work on this. And that's how you're growing. You're growing with the, with the roles you're studying. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Was this, um, this was English, yes? You yes, perfect this? English, perfect <laughs> English. I'm glad I found out what Vaxen means. <laughs> Vaxen, to grow up. I knew when you said Kreshere, I was like, okay, that's, that's building. All right, yeah, yeah. Vaxen, to grow. Um, so I'd love to ask you one last question. I'd love to ask you what your desert island vocalise is. Meaning if you have one vocalise or song to get your voice ready to sing, what would it be? I don't have any just one um, vocalise because it depends on the day, it depends what I'm going to sing, it depends <laughs> if I'm going to sing a Rossini opera, Mozart opera, Wagner opera. So okay. I don't have any, um, yeah, let's say, vocalise which I use every day or so. Okay. Really is there one that, is there one in particular that you might feel is most healthy for your voice? Let's put it that way. Well, an Italian song. Perfect. Tosti songs. Uh, they what, are just what, a massage. What Tosti song? What Tosti song? Well, Ideale or something like this, you know. Or sometimes okay. Verdi aria, no. <laughs> <laughs> And I and, and I have I have to say there is um, that's maybe good advice for for singers for young singers there are this um, Panofsky vocalizes mm -hmm. vocalize mm -hmm. this where the 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 vocalizer of the Kalas from Kalas Kalas always sing every day the vocalizer of Panofsky yeah and they're really good I have to say mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. very handsome oh that's awesome and do you use them as well yeah 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 oh yeah, that's yeah. wonderful yeah. wonderful. If you don't want to think about vocalize, uh, about if you don't want to create something for you, just being mentally lazy and studying yeah. a little bit um, technique so you can take this vocalize from, from Panofsky or even from Rossini. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, it shows That's everything. Good. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, tell me a little bit about what you're doing now. What what do you have going on in your life? I know you've got a, a lot of different things happening right now. Well, yes, I, I try to, of course, I, I'm now 49 more or less. So you, I have to think about my life. And, uh, and I think the most important thing for me is, and I talked also with other, with other singers and other musicians, is a little bit, a little bit to get back the theaters to the to the artists um, mm -hmm. I think this is very important because um, I know so many people which are really um, yeah depressed about the business mm -hmm. about what happened today because mm -hmm. um, there are very often people in the in the in the directions which don't know anything about singing or yeah. about music or about the yeah yeah about about active singing about being a musician and this is very hard for us and um, um, yeah I think in, in the in the former future I, I, I hope that I, I find some guys which have the same ideas to create something like a festival or to to have a theater together Mm -hmm. and um yeah that's that's that would be a dream it's it's a dream for me that's Maybe wonderful in the future we will we had something like this in in the Tiroler Festspiel in Erl uh -huh. so yeah it was a it was yeah a festival directed by a musician yeah, yeah. and um made for most musicians for the singers Mm -hmm. and uh, not for the business yeah. and or the, for the public because we were always sold out yeah this idea unfortunately um, um, was 
cracked down was no yeah. how can you say yeah yeah that was was broken was broken yes mm -hmm. well, that's it but this is a dream to get back the theater more in the hands of the of the of the artists yeah i think that's very important that's wonderful because at least and we are on stage not right. the other people. Right. That, that is so true so true and do you have um, any upcoming performances that you'd like to share? Where can we find you on the internet? Well, we have the problem of Corona now. Right. So there were some things we, we were talking about, but I'm not sure if they, they take place. Mm -hmm. next, the next project will, I hope, will be a Meistersinger. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it, it's not sure if it takes place, so. Yeah. Yes. Now, hopefully our Tote Stadt will take place sometimes. Yes. <laughs> Resurrect the Tote Stadt. <laughs> yeah, that would be very nice if, yeah. if we can do this together sometime yes. in the future. What, um, where can we find you on the internet, Ferdinand? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a web page. <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. Yes, I had a web page, but um, I was, I was, I'm, I'm lazy with this, you know, you have all, all the time just to, to write something to, I'm a, very, a little bit old fashioned in that, but you can find me, I have a YouTube channel, so if oh, you great. want to find me on the YouTube channel, you can find me. Perfect. And if you're, um, I'm, e I'm not even on Facebook. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> if you want to find me, you have to write. You have to write to Julia Rados an email, and she will give you my email. <laughs> yeah. That's wonderful. And and you do teach, Ferdinand, right? Yeah, yeah, I you do. do. Teach. Yeah, that's wonderful. Are you teaching but, online? That's a professional, professional like other people. But uh, I do teach. Yes, yes, I tried now with the Corona. Yeah. Pandemic. Yes, yeah. so pandemic. <laughs> Um, I also started a little bit to, to teach online. Okay. But I have to get too used to it, I have to say. Yes. It's not really, yeah. yeah. But if you know the people, yes, it's, you, right. you, can do it. you can do it. You know their voices in, in life and it's easy to translate. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Well, Ferdinand, I think you just have such a different perspective and it's so wonderful to hear your your view on singing and your view on technique i i hope you know how special and unique your perspective is so i thank you for sharing well, that with us i think the most important thing is to follow your own way it's mm -hmm. not all the time clear where it is um so there are crises all the time being tenor is is a, is, is a permanent crisis <laughs> in a way <laughs> um, but at least you have to stay with yourself you have to to make to follow your own way that's it what it, i followed my own way i said always to me it's very important to sing rossini to sing mozart to sing wagner yeah. That's very, very weird because everybody doesn't know you. If you're singing Wagner, you can't sing Rossini. Or... No, you can. Because I, yeah. I, I want to do this and I wanted to sing everything together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not in line, maybe, but it's <laughs> important that you are able to sing uh, uh, so different repertory. Yeah. 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 And that's my way. That's a little bit uh, a crazy way. And. Um, of my uh, intendant or director says, yeah, but what are you now? Are you a German uh, tenor or Italian tenor? Or what are you? <laughs> well, right. I'm just Ferdinand, basta, that's yes. me. So take me like this or leave it. I love it. Mm. I love that. Well, Ferdinand, thank you so much for coming on Technique Talks. Thank you for the invitation. It was Whew, everything yes. talking you did great <laughs> you did great fantastic better than me i this don't is... think so <laughs> yes your vocabulary is outstanding it's wonderful <laughs>
<laughs> well, so, I appreciate your time. That's it's really been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation, and I hope we we hear, hear each soon. Yes, for sure. All right, take care. Take care.